All right, so we've got a little project here. I'm gonna give you a walkthrough. Um, they had a roof leak. They're putting the house on the market, so they kind of just want me to repair what needs to repair. There's a hole in it, so I can put my finger through it, basically. You can see the water stains. The roof has been fixed. All right, so I'm gonna use my six inch taping knife and my mud pan to catch any debris. I'm just gonna scrape off the loose layer and see how stout that drywall is underneath. I mean, it's pretty obvious that there's a, a little soft spots that I'm gonna have to cut out and replace. But again, like I said in the beginning of the video, homeowners are putting the house on the market. They wanna get it repaired right, but they don't wanna back break the bank. So I'm gonna try and accommodate that. But once I start digging into this, it is what it is. Uh, this has been repaired before we've got a piece of fiberglass mesh tape that you can see the the joint compounds not even stuck to it I'd have to assume that they used a all-purpose joint compound on the first coat per manufacturer specifications always use a setting type compound for the first coat over fiberglass mesh tape it's crucial or you're gonna have your tape fail right off the bat. Okay, so uh, that's pretty soft. It's getting bigger. The good thing is the ceiling's dry, so I don't have to worry about it leaking again or anything like that. I'm just kind of banging around, seeing how far out I'm gonna need to cut this drywall out. The good thing is there's a rafter on that side and then the other side, I'm just gonna have to put a furring strip in. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go out to the van and grab, I've got a little scrap piece of half inch drywall and a furring strip and my uh, drywall square and I'm gonna trace out a piece and cut out everything that's rotten. All right, so I'm determining where I want this uh, new piece of drywall to go. So I'm gonna come out about this far. And I've got another stud over here. Actually, it's a truss. I'm gonna make a mark here so I know I have something to attach to. Then this is just a furring strip from a repair. So I'm just gonna move the repair over some. It seems pretty solid just out from that. So I'm gonna make it work here. So I wanna go 17 and a quarter. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these type of videos. Seventeen and a quarter. By twenty five. You want to cut a furring strip four inches longer than the twenty five inches. So you overlap the furring strip on both sides of the existing drywall. What I'm gonna do first is, this is two factory edges, and if I put that on the repair, it's gonna turn into a lot more mud work. So I'm gonna cut the factory edge off, which is the tapered edge. Probably wanna go about four inches from the top. And score the back side. Now we can pull our measurements. So we want to go 25. Actually, it's 25 and an eight. I'm going to go with that. So I just need to go 17 and a quarter.
Doesn't have to be exact because we're going to make a cutout on the ceiling to make it exact. What I like to do is I like to make a mark on one end and then I'm going to make a mark connecting this to the ceiling. That way I know which way the board goes. Let me know in the comments what kind of drywall project you're working on. Just going to trace it out. Gonna be a perfect fit. So I've already cut out the damaged drywall using a keyhole saw and a razor knife. Next you want to remove any of the drywall screws that are left over in the framing members. Then you always want to reattach the existing drywall around the perimeter whenever possible. Alright, so what I'm going to do is cut this furring strip. We got a measurement of the length 25 inches. I'm going to add two in inches for each side, so I'm going to cut it about 30 inches. It doesn't have to be exact. Give it a little extra. I'm going to go ahead outside and cut this to keep the dust down. Okay, we're going to put the fern strip in. And overlap it on both sides. To attach the drywall, I'm using an inch and a quarter coarse thread drywall screws that are made to attach drywall to wood. Also, the screw gun I'm using is a 12 volt DeWalt impact driver. It's a small compact drill that's awesome. Once you have the drywall in place, you can tell where the wood is where you need to attach the drywall just by the screws on the existing drywall. I'll leave links down in the description to all kinds of different drywall and texturing videos. Go mix up some mud, uh, 20 minute mud, and use some Fibro Fuse drywall tape. It's like a mat. This is the best tape for repairs. All right, so I'm going to fill these gaps and bed the Fibro Fuse. Using my 12 inch knife, cover a lot of area quickly. Got 20 minute mud. I mixed the 20 minute mud a little thick just so I could fill these gaps and it wouldn't be too soupy. Then I'm going to flatten it out with my 6 inch. I'm just basically getting the mud up there on the repair. I'm not trying to make it pretty. I need a little bit of a bed to lay the Fiba Fuse drywall tape in. Then I'm going to apply the tape and then smooth it all out again. I'm going to 
gonna um, put the tape in place and then cut it with my knife once it's up there. I'm gonna go from the middle and out and then just tear it on your knife. Same thing. From the middle. This tape fuses as one with the joint compound. Super strong with the setting type compound, 20 minute mud I'm using. From the middle. From the middle. Get more mud up there. From the middle, from the middle. So I'm gonna take my 12 inch knife and float that out. Alright, so here I'm using a Milwaukee heat gun. It's made for drying things. It does get very hot, so you got to keep it moving. A lot of times when I go do a repair like this, I need to get it done in a day. So uh, if you play your cards right, use the right type of mud. I used a 20 minute setting type compound. I'm just going to kind of speed up the process a bit with the heat gun. I'm not holding it in one spot for very long I'm just giving it a little heat to uh, set the compound off a little quicker I'll leave a link to my Amazon store that has all the tools that I use in my videos including the fiber fuse drywall tape and the Milwaukee heat gun okay so I've got the 20 minute mixed up I'm gonna need to add a little mud over where the daylight is over here on both sides let me know in the comments if you're a DIYer, contractor, painter. Just kind of curious. So I'm just going to blend around the edges while I'm waiting for this to dry. It's, it's semi set up. So I'm just going to blend it with a wet, it's just a wet rag. Just to kind of blend the edges. You want to do it while it's not quite set up. But not super wet either. Mud that is. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section down below. Just kind of going in a circular motion. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you're liking these videos. So it's dry. It's probably only been about 20 minutes since I mudded it. It's dry to the touch, that is. It takes a little while longer since it's a chemical reaction instead of air dry. But I'm just going to go around and hit any of these uh, ridges. 
so it doesn't catch the mud when I come back and mud this one more time. All right, time to skim coat the ceiling repair. I'll be using an all-purpose joint compound by USG. The five gallon buckets have a dark green lid. 12 inch taping knife, all purpose joint compound. I added a little water just to get the air pockets and make it more creamy. I'm gonna fill in on the sides that need a little mud. I don't know what it is, but cats are never very happy with me when I'm doing work in their house. All right, so since this last skim coat was with all-purpose joint compound, I'm going to let it dry overnight because I prefer to do a skip trial texture over dry joint compound. Okay, so it's the next morning. I let it dry overnight because I used an all-purpose joint compound to do the final skim coat. Reason being, the all-purpose dries harder and more consistently than the hot mud. So before I do the skip trial texture, I went around with a wet rag and just kind of knocked down any little edges along the perimeter. That way, it's going to be a nice blend to the original texture. All right, what I'm going to do now is hit it with some skip trial. I'm going to use my 14-inch taping knife to apply the skip trial mud. So what I'm going to do is just get a probably a one inch strip across the end of the taping knife. Not a lot of mud. You want to keep it, you know, not too much. You're going to have to drag it a couple times to get it going. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section down below. Once I upload this video, I'm going to head down to the comments and answer as many questions as I can. I'm going to come back and blend it all in where it meets the existing ceiling. I 
Again, I'm putting barely any pressure on the 14 inch taping knife when I'm pulling. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm letting the joint compound and the sand do the work. And I'm also spotting where I'm, it's not grabbing, so I can just add a couple dabs and it'll all blend in when I knock it down. kind of blending it to nothing on the existing so it's not going to be a good spot. Alright, so I'm going to go the opposite way to knock it down. Lightly. Pressure on the left, lifting on the right. Keep any lines from coming out of the texture. So next I want to drop down on the floor and check it out from down there and see what's what. If you're 6'2", you can just hit the ceiling without getting back up. Just hitting any voids and also blending. Knock it down, same direction as I did before. All right. I recommend spot priming the ceiling repair and new texture and then repainting the entire ceiling to make it all nice and consistent. I like using a Zinsser 123 latex primer and your favorite flavor of latex paint for the ceiling. And if you want to catch the next video or any of my upcoming videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button now in the center of the screen to keep up with all my videos. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave some of my most popular video links down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching.